Welcome back, dear friends. Well, this is just a carrying on from just after the last one left off, hence my shirt. But I'm doing some interesting things, so I thought I'd better keep you posted. Let me show you. Now, if you remember the last video, I've got these two lovely candle effects that flickered beautifully, connected via um, soft adhesive copper um, tape, which was lovely. So I got them done. But what I noticed was when this was fixed on, the bottom of Victoria the, Six, the Singing Automaton's house, um, you could see the shine from the solder joints and wires and things like that inside. And to my mind, Electmatricky has no place to play in steampunk machines, because as you know, if you've watched previous videos, I try and make all my machines look as though they use technology that would have been available to the Victorians, which makes it so enjoyable. So I need to cover this up, I need to hide it, and I thought, hmm, there comes a time in every steampunk designer's life when a little bit of cardboard modelling ticks all the boxes. So I've fiddled around, keep experimenting, and found that this arrangement works really well. This bit screens the light shining from the LEDs over there, nothing's sort of squashed, everything fits together and you can't see any reflection of anything and also because of the bright LED that's built into the candle effect it shines past the flame so I really didn't want to see that because it, it, I just want it to be symmetrical quite often I don't like symmetry but I think this is a time when symmetry is good so I've made the model and I've taken it over here and I've measured it and put it onto the CAD software very basic though it is, it's still a joy. And now I'm going to cut it out of 2mm acrylic. I made these bits because this is going to be seen. It's going to be this side of the window, if you like. Um, and I think it looks lovely to have some sort of... It's going to be copper, some copper rivets and some nice cutouts. That's why there's two layers there. But I remember doing just this same thing on... Um, well, this is the Is It Time for Tea Machine. It's an interesting hairdo. Um, to hide all the electronics there. Again, an afterthought, because I did this as I went along. That's exactly how I did it. Isn't that funny? Subconscious or something. With the slots and everything. And that, when you look through the window, if you catch a glimpse, it just looks right and hides all the nastiness. The amazing nastiness, but nonetheless nastiness. Measure once, cut at least twice. This didn't fit. It kept knocking into the sides of her body, the um, speech thing that goes backwards and forwards. So I, in the end, I armed and armed, faffed about, cut bits off, sanded bits off, and then just thought, look, let's just do it properly. Still waiting for the person sensor, so let's just got time to do this. So I made a new one that sort of addresses all the issues, and also with a nice little bracket so I can fix it in. And having moved the teensy back, there's now plenty of room for the candle effect. So I'm now going to take that off and get that sprayed up. And whilst the paint's drying, I'm being actively reminded that it's not yet time, but it's never too early to pop and hunt some squirrels. Look what arrived this very morrow! It's one of these! This is a Grove person sensor with eye iron things. It's got, as before, a little camera there. Much smaller lens than the last one and all sorts of other connections and things, which is very interesting. Now, I've connected it up to see whether it'll work, because it does have an Arduino library that you can install onto Arduino, and it has an example with it. It's all very exciting. Connected it up, it begins, and then nothing happens at all. Now, it does say that you need to check the latest thing, or <laughs> some sort of thing somewhere, by actually connecting this, just using the USB-C plug socket thing to your computer and reading off the um, library, the number of the installed whatever it is. But of course, standardised USB and all that, the one style of USB lead I haven't got is a style C. So I've had to order one, so I can't do that. So, during the meanwhile, let's put that to one side. It's always something exciting to do. Fingers crossed over that. Whilst waiting, I thought I'd fill in this gap this side. 
We've got that, we've got the lovely flickering candles, now I want this side filled in. So, what I thought, I've been thinking, oh, focus, I've been thinking about this for ages, is using a clock movement with a pendulum. And this is a particularly nice one, because the pendulum looks nice and mechanical. Now, I was thinking I could mount the clock back to front, not worry about the hands or anything, because that all happens too slowly, but just have the pendulum swinging with some sort of attachment, possibly some text and things, and an interesting battery support and other bits and pieces. And I thought, well, what a shame. Hang on, let me put battery in. Not to use that movement, because that's fast. Obviously, that's one second, but you can clearly see that moving. Thing is, it's stuck inside. So, my next problem or idea, and it's worth, I was telling myself, what, don't waste your time. But I was thinking, well, this is a sort of thing where you learn lots from it, e.g. not to ever try it again. I've marked the centre of that gear, the one that's spinning visually, and I'm going to do a little drawing on the laser cutter and try and cut out most of this, leaving a little prong, which will continue, hopefully, to support the gear, and it's a little sort of indexed dimple thing. The reason behind this is, um, I remember one of the Hellraiser films, brilliant, Thingy Del Toro um, directed them, absolutely amazing films, really good, and there was a very nasty evil villain, assassin, and he was actually clockwork, when he was stabbed or something, sand came out, it was very strange. And he had a sort of clockwork mechanism on the, where his heart was or something. And he actually sort of wound it around and it started. But all the time there was some sort of little ticking thing. May have got that completely wrong. But somewhere, someone has used a sort of pendulum to try and impl imply a sort of heartbeat. And that's what I want to do with her. The, the other nice thing about this is obviously I, you can't solder onto these connections because they're plated, the battery ones. Now you can see there's a red and black wire in there. Wouldn't it be easy just to connect this up? But no, dear friends, I'm going to try and make some really complicated battery-shaped replacement thing out of 8mm copper, because it would look lovely fixed in there. Mm, keep life simple. Well, there's the design. That is going to be cut out of that. A recipe for disaster, I hear you cry. Quite possibly. Right, let's give it a go. Just Let's just do it, start. Well, 20 millimetres, no, 20 seconds, and I don't know. Whatever setting it was, wasn't quite high enough. And I tried to nibble it out with the um, scalpel and it just snapped in the end, the middle bit. So I glued it very carefully back together. Back in the kitchen again, just because it's a nice open space and the lighting is pretty even. And I can test the new Grove person sensor because the uh, lead came this morning so I could connect it all up. It wasn't, it wasn't plug and play. There were some other things to it, but luckily the website that supports this uh, person sensor is pretty good. There's lots of pictures and illustrations and instructions on how to update the drivers and things and what happens if you get this error message. So I followed the destructions, dear friends, and finally, it started giving out some sort of data that looks like it might be doing something useful. How thrilling, I can't tell you. So what I've done is to connect it up and use that same drawing um, little sketch that I did for the last one. So it actually draws what it's seeing. I'll show you. Right, so every time it redraws, it has registered it's seen a, a new face. Now I'm standing side on to it, which is interesting. But, but you can already see it's drawing it to one side. And the last one only ever drew things right in the middle of the screen. So if I move round, put my glasses on so I can actually see what's going on. Look, it's moved. Isn't that amazing? So I'm on the right hand side of the room. If I go back over here, then yeah, look. It's moved over to that. That's that's amazing. This is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> a waste of well, I don't know. It's not a waste of time, is it? It's an investment in time. I've got that cut out, glued back together, having snapped it off, and it works. I've tried that over there, and it does support the gear. It's centered, so that's nice. And I've just sanded off all the lettering and information on the back, so I'm on the sanding machine. So now I'm going to use wet and dry. It's a very very carefully get this lovely and smooth and looking beautiful this is ridiculous 
I've got that sanded, not being smooth, no lettering or type on it, and I've managed to colour the gear. Unfortunately, I was going to use some of that copper tape, but it won't stick to the plastic that the gear's made of. So I coloured the back silver and then just drew on some little black triangles. So that's nice and that works. Now to replace the battery with a connector. Look, we have one of those, and I've discovered that one of these 8mm fittings on top is just shorter than that. So now I've cut out two pieces of 8mm acrylic that push into the end and hold one of these split pins in each, which can then be make the electrical connection. What could be simpler, may he or cry? It's all coming together. Look, there's that bit and that bit and this bit. And you can't even see the little thing that ticks round because of the pendulum. What a fantastic idea. Live and learn. And then look here. I've got the new camera mounted, which um, really has worked well. I do like that. That sticks back even further. But it's a lovely effect. And I'll put a couple of washers under there, the back, just to, because it seems to get a bit warm. So just to let some air circulate. And the camera has ended up in exactly the right position for the original label. Except because the lens is really small, far smaller, it's about a millimetre diameter this one, and that shouldn't be any problem, this shouldn't uh, um, restrict its view at all, so I'll get that fixed on, and of course, because it uses um, SDA and SCL, the two, I2C, all these connections are the same, other than this needed 3.3 volts, this piece of tat cack, um, and the new one needs 5 volts because it's got a proper regulator on it. So I need to wire up, rewire the other end, we'll get that fitted together. I was about to connect up the new person sensor and I realised, thankfully in the nick of time, that it's a 5 volt device and I've checked on the specifications as much as I can find and all the communication, everything is 5 volts. Can you see where I'm going with this? The I2C communication will be 5 volts when it's coming from this end because it's a bi-directional communication system and the teensy down there, hidden away, is 3.3 volts and you can't run inputs and outputs at 5 volts because, well inputs at 5 volts, focus! because it'll damage it. So after much umming and ahhing consideration I've had to order a bi-directional I2C communication level changing thing. So that means I couldn't do that, but, as I've said many times, there's other things to be getting on with. Look! This is what I've been getting on with, and I'm really pleased with it, because I know what it is, but I, it, I caught it out of the corner of my eye earlier, and I thought, oh, that looks exciting and interesting. And it does, especially now it's got an engraving, circulation, and the copper bit, and I've just, obviously overcomplicating everything, made a pointer and a red felt disc. I've also sorted out where it can sit this side, so you can see it really clearly, which I'm very pleased about. Back to Ohm's Law again. I'm going to run this, obviously it needs 1.5 volts, so I'm going to use a potential divider um, with 10 milliamps running through it, which means I can easily tap off well, it's going to be next to nothing, the current that the clock movement and pendulum needs. So with these two resistors, that will allow me to achieve that, and that can run off the 5 volt supply. Before actually wiring it up, I thought I'd better check my calculations. Now we have 5 volts there. We have the two resistors here, and they're producing 1.378 volts, which is fine, because clock movements are designed to work at very low um, voltages because the batteries start running flat but sure enough it's working I'm ever so pleased with that, that's come out beautifully and what I didn't even think about was the reflection in this silvered bit that's great, I'm very pleased and then on the back we have the potential divider so I've got 0 volts there that can go straight to that connection which is 0 volts and then that can wind its way around and go to the 5 volt supply. I've got the level converter wired up handily. I thought I could just put it in the back along with the speakers near the bottom as all the wires I needed are there. It takes the SDA and SCL on one side, the high voltage, and a 5 volt high voltage supply all on that side and then on this side 
that's the equivalent low voltage SDN, low voltage SCL or anything else that you want low voltage 3.3 .3 volts and ground which I've checked and is connected to both sides so it basically allows them to talk to each other at different voltages well this is very exciting I think it's working I connected that level changer up connected it all up and I thought yeah, so many things that might not work optimism my watchword but it immediately started sending data back and I'm using that same sketch where it draws it to show what's happening. Now I've been wandering around like you do gambling about the extension workshop and this time it's found me within this shape. Very interesting because before when I did it it found me in a much bigger shape. So I think all I can assume is different lighting, slight changes in things quite sure what but I think I might have to have a setting up switch on the back of Victoria so when you first switch it on you set it to set up and then you wander around parade around in front covering all possible angles and areas and whatever maximum minimum um, positions and then you switch it off and say okay run and then basically it maps this distance and that distance to the servo motor so it just works with her in that area there's the pendulum or pendulum as we call it in the trade so that's nice so it's running properly I've connected it all up can't wait to see that with the front panel connected with the lights um, I'm not sure what's happening now because I've just tried to see it get it, her to sing along to the accompaniment <laughs> I can only assume I'm asking too much of the teens, even though it's got a 600 megahertz ARM processor on it. I assume asking it to keep checking the person sensor and move the servo motors around and do all that is just too much for it because um, it won't play and sync anymore. What a joy! Oh. Without those two in, it all stays having enough time to calibrate and work properly. Next job, use the spare Uno I've got and find space for I've got space for haven't I in the bottom of our home on the right and use that to monitor the person sensor and move all the servos. Thanks again if you're still watching. Hope to see you next time. Uh, any, uh, please click like, subscribe and everything. I'm going to go and sit in a darkened room and cry quietly.